Her harbor was discovered in 1619 by a Dane searching for the east. Her fort was built by the English seeking a fur empire. In 1930, Canada built her grain elevators. For the 1600 inhabitants, there's eight weeks of shipping in the summer, for the rest of the year, isolation. Churchill, Manitoba, frozen on the receding curve of Hudson Bay, an old frontier on the northern edge of West. Everyone who's here got a dream. The North's a nice, quiet place to dream the world away. When I first came here in Churchill, I was only a young man. There was no white people here. For every man, there's a season. For every there's a time Every man can walk on the water If he waits for the cold winter time It's a good place to hide, you know, where you can recognize yourself and other people can recognize you. There's a lot of people up here that have run away from a different way of life. And they get here and they, they get hooked on it. Now you can have a guy who's white physically but who is not white mentally. He comes to a place that suits him. It must inspire, it must mystify, it must involve him in a way. That is the person who becomes a northerner. Well, I came up to Churchill in uh... 1930, in the month of August, I was hired as a carpenter for work on the elevator down there. The people who built the railroad in 1929, the people who built the harvest board in 1928, 1930, who built everything here, They live in the flats. The flats is looked upon as the slum of Churchill. It was a tough time, nothing to do, and this depression was coming on, and uh, lots of idle people all over. So it was no use to go outside and look for work. That, there was no work. I guess I could even have married her in Churchill too, but there was mostly mostly Indians around, and I didn't think so much of that Indian Morris. They were drinking too, them Indians, and I didn't care about too much drinking. So I said, I might as well 
keep on going the way I have been going. Oh, I had quite the uh, few uh, happy times building boats too. I built uh, quite a few of them for the trappers, and everyone seemed to want one of them boats. Happy? I, I don't. I don't really think anybody happy. I cannot be happy about anything. Life is not so not very happy, but it, it's tolerable anyway. I can't get my legs to get out to like I used to, so I have to use this piece of iron here. No happy. Nobody stays happy forever, you see. a native who lives in the North. He was born in the North, and when he dies, it will be in the North. That's the only life I did like in, in the wintertime is driving dogs and trapping. And in the summertime, I used to like canoeing and then working on the boat. Working on the water, you see everything different. If I can go back about another 40 years, I would try it all over again. <laughs> Especially now with the price of furs. Right before we get to the rough ice. Tell you the truth, when I first came here, there was no Cree Indians like myself, but there was Chippewan Indians and then Eskimos. There was lots of white trappers across the river, but that's where they stayed. It was, it was quiet, it was quiet. But when the white people start to come around, everything just went the other way around. I think I was a lot freer in my young days than it is now. I got lots of problems now. In my young days, I didn't have no problems. When I was just bringing my my kitties when they were sm small, I never had. To, I never used to have no problems. I used to think them days when the kids were small. Soon as I get my family grown up, then I'll, my problems would be all gone. But it was wrong. I got more problems now as, as I grew up my family. Churchy was dead for years and years, you know. Until then. I did the, the, the last few years, now she's going full blast. All right, got job. Indians got houses. They give them government, give them nice big houses. People build which they're doing at Churchill at the moment. I don't think anybody is really interested, actually, in what conditions they live in. Crazy. <laughs> well, I guess it's going to be good. Whatever it's going to be, I don't know. <laughs> A white man is in the North because it pays well. He has a suitcase mined. He's there for a period of time to collect X amount of money. <laughs> <laughs>
No, that's... Well, it just seems, just seems to happen there. You go down to the hotel and you, yeah. you sit there, you spend a few dollars and... There's a couple of the broads come over, sit with you, just get talking. And... Well, the guys usually make out pretty good, I think, yeah. They... If a guy can't get lucky in church, he'll get lucky nowhere. <laughs> 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 These people go back and forth here. There's the people that spoiling our people in here in Churchill because they know they're going to get out of here soon. None was ever asked the people, what do they want? And it's funny, they don't want anything. First time I came to Churchill, comparing to the bush, it was kind of a stra strange place. We had to go to school, sort of, for a training program. I'm capable of doing anything, you no? Know? Labor, carpenter. I wouldn't really want to see myself, you no, know, living in a bush. It's not like the old days where you can make a living eh? by trapping and all that. There's no way, man. This time's change. I got used to to uh, civilizations like that. Uh, It's all government here in town. The government, they reckon that, OK, we'll give them a facelift. They only facelifted buildings, but they never facelifted the people. They're just the same. They're just, they are what they are. One thing in the North Country, you, you ain't got any money. You're poor. You know, hey, hey, you need a buck. Here's five bucks, boy. Hey, boy, hey, that's way. You go down south, hey, you're broke in Winnipeg. I just would say Winnipeg. You stand outside and you're thirsty and you ain't got that money, hey. You no. think a guy give you a guy give me a nickel or a dime? No dice. No, I don't know you, chum. In the North Country, there's no system. They don't want a system, or even a straight job from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. We have four levels of government in Churchill. We have federal government, we have provincial government, we have Northwest Territories government, and we have local government. Wonderful. We have more government than most people ever have in their lives. All these things are directed against people who live here, who don't have this east-west mentality. And then you bring in Churchill's largest industry, the liquor store. The liquor store does $200,000 worth of business a year. It is awful to drink beer. Big be hangover the next morning. You don't feel like working. I like cooking for my husband and the kids. They like my cooking too. I was born in trap line, in a tent. I like uh, all this trap line. <laughs> Around here, I got nothing to do. All I have to do is stay home, clean the house up, wash the clothes, and clean my kids up and meet them and stuff. So. I don't like staying all by myself, especially after my kids leave. In the afternoon, I don't have nothing to do. I go up to. 
sometimes I said, I'm, oh, I'm going to quit drinking. I think, I, I think I'm going to quit drinking someday. That's what I always told myself, I'll quit. Same with my husband, I'll quit. Next station up here, pal, have some more. I woke up the great big beach and sit down there on the boat. <laughs> it's always a get together alcohol. And drinking is a social gathering for everybody. What a farm. What a hay meadow. For the cow. <laughs> I bought lots of cows. They're enjoying themselves. They're doing what they want to do. <laughs> People look after everybody, and everybody looks after everybody else. I went home one morning, about 2 o'clock. When it's time for me to go and lay down in the bed, the old lady, she doesn't want to have anything to do with me. She started to bawl me out. It hurts me, and I got mad. And at the time I gave her a slap, I told her, keep her mouth shut. When I woke up, I realized what I have done to my wife. I felt so cheap. I told her that she wouldn't see me taking a bottle of beer for one week anyway. And now this is getting on to 16 years since I told her this. I never took a bottle since that. It's important, all right. We can't do without a woman. She got works to do for you, and so therefore she's pretty handy. Her eyes is getting poor. If I was a woman, I don't think I would ever try. <laughs> The man is not the boss anymore. Very few, if there's any. Maybe one right here. <laughs> I came up here in 67. I didn't know what I was coming into. But I came up here and it just grew me, you know, the people are so nice and friendly. And it's, you know, like this, for the small community it is, you know, it, naturally everything is, I don't know. It's just that the people are, they just keep you here. It's not the town really, it's just the people. I will come now. <laughs> <laughs> Turning and feet now. Yeah. That's my card. My wife's father was a white trapper up north. And this Eskimo family came by. But these, this, this family was so underfed and undernourished like this year from long travel and that. He trapped for them and he fished for them, maybe, and he fed them. And he brought them back, you know, to the health. Now, in the Eskimo tradition, the prized possession of an Eskimo is his wife. So, Tudu, he offered his <laughs> woman. And out of this offering came, okay, six sons and one dot. I know, boss. My mother, when she was young, was very beautiful. Eh? And Tudu is rather homely looking and ugly. And in time, she said she became to like him, you know. Dorothy was promised to this other Eskimo. And when her parents found out that I was going with Dorothy, 
they were a little bit perturbed, really, because I was a white man and was an Eskimo. They were trying to convince her into marrying this other guy. And I got perturbed because I said, well, you're not a horse trading block. You're a human being. You have your own mind. And so I married an Eskimo woman, and which I'm very proud of, which I never thought I would ever end up marrying, really. But I did. There's one more left. Hi, Everybody's Wait. honest. <laughs> I hope my children are native children. They would have their mother's way and have her grandparents' way. Because I wouldn't want them to lose this. So this is what's happening up here. The white man is taking away all what the Indian knows. And he's pushing the white man's knowledge into him. I don't know myself. I'm, I'm a white man. I lived in this town for six years. I came from a city, but I still want to know the ways and the willing and the being and everything this year of the old timers, of the Indians, of the Eskimos. So I can know what it's like. I'm coming to the age no I can expect to die any time. And that is uh, all right as far as I'm concerned, but then I can't do any more work here anyway. I haven't seen all the world, but I saw enough of it anyway. Yeah, the job is done. There is one thing I want to do before I die. I'd like to build a sleigh. I'll call it a sleigh anyway. That'll be going on water in the summer and it go on the snow in the winter. But I have my doubts now if I can finish it. But I will try, at least, if I stay alive, I'll be trying. But uh, I figure I will be staying here and put in the ground and maybe freeze stiff. <laughs> and then stay there till next uh, reincarnation. I just can't say what's going to be about 30 years from now. If we keep on like that, but people say it might change. I'd like to see that day. Oh, I got lots of funny ideas. Sometimes I got an idea to leave Churchill. Go down, down south the ways where I cheaper to live. Lots of fish in there. Lots of moose in the fall. But I know I'm getting too old for that kind of, but still. Churchill is not a place for me anymore. I'm just in the road for people. I would say the North's a good place to dream. And it was just hiding. Hiding in self-dreams that nobody else would actually ever find out about them. And I think in Churchill, 
you'll find that quite a lot of majority of people would like to leave for somewhere else, north, because it's getting civilized here again. Cold winter time. 